telling you about yesterday. The one who was following you? Yeah, well, he's following me again today. This morning I got up and I went down the CES. He followed me all the way down the CES. Then I went to the milk bar and he followed me all the way to the milk bar. And then I went to the park. He followed you all the way down to the park? <laughs> How did you know? It was just an educated guess. <laughs> what do you reckon he's doing? Well, maybe he's put a tail on you. No? Maybe the CIA or the KGB are after you. Julia, I get the extinct expression that you are not taking me very seriously. Colin, what, what was, was he wearing a brown suit? Yes. I saw him too, Julia. I'm on my way to work this morning. You saw him? Yeah, he was just hanging around. Hanging around where? Well, just out the front of our place. He looked like a private detective. Colin. No. Colin. You haven't done anything wrong, have you? No. I, no except for all, all library books that's a little bit overdue at the Pittswood Library. Colin, the Pittswood Library does not send out strange men in brown suits to chase up overdue books. No, this one's really, really overdue. How overdue? About 15 years. <laughs> Yeah, well, I haven't finished reading it yet. Oh, Colin, think. Okay. What about? Why? Why is this man following you? It's very strange behaviour. Have you been involved in anything... wobbly? Illegal. Julia, don't you think you're overreacting a little bit here? I mean, maybe it's just a coincidence that I saw this guy this morning and Colin saw him in the park. The doorbell rang. I know. You answer it. You answer it. No, you answer it, Michael. Come on, what are you afraid of? I think I might just go to my room. Nothing. I'm not afraid of it. No, come on, Michael. You are. You're afraid of something. Get up and go and answer that. Look, Julia, I'll be right behind it you, Michael. It could be anybody at the door. And even if it is this guy in the brown suit, I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation why he's been following... Colin? <laughs> Colin? Uh, uh, I'm not, not here. Colin, there's somebody here who wants to have a word with you. I really think you should see him. No. Um, I'll leave you to it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, um, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry I had it for so long. I promise I won't do it again if I would throw any more books. It was just that I was still reading it and you look familiar. I'm Len. Len Carpenter. You used to call me Dad. Why? <laughs> I'm your father, Colin. I wasn't sure it was you at first. Yeah, it, it's, it's me, all right. Yeah. Everybody around here seems to know you. Yeah, I, I am a bit of a local celebrant. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've been away from Pittswood for so long. You and I have got a lot of catching up to do, Colin. Yeah. So, I missed you, Dad. Yeah, I missed you too, boy. Wow! I don't believe 
believe no, it. No, it's true, Julie. It really is Colin's father. Look, mm. look at the name tag on the suitcase. Oh, Leonard Carpenter. Oh, my God. Well, I know Leonard's a bit of a dorky name, but... Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Do you know what this tag means? He's forgetful? No, no, no. Look, look at the back of it. Look. It's from a prison. You're right. I don't get it. Well, when you go into prison, they take away your possessions, they tag them, and then you collect them when you leave. How do you know? Because I'm a teacher. And anyway, I've watched prisoners. <laughs> Colin's father has obviously just got out of jail. Oh. Well, you cut him off then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, oh, well, you've met uh, Michael. Um, yeah. Dad, this is Julia. How do you do? Call me Len. Hello. <laughs> Dad's going to be uh, staying in my room for a while. Oh, well, that'll be just fine. <laughs> I can't get over it. <laughs> Fifteen years is such a long time. Fifteen years, that's a long sentence. <laughs> Not really. Fifteen years. <laughs> Nine words. So, how does it feel to be out? Yeah, well, uh, things have certainly changed. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a bit weird seeing Colin after all this time. Yeah. Yeah, let me show you something. Stop! Oh, I he was going to shoot. Shout! She hates it when people shout. Uh, now, look, there's a, a photograph of Colin when he was 12 years old, look. That's a lovely photograph. Yeah, Colin was a good-looking boy. <laughs> the local kids used to tease him and say he was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly killed him. Did you? Uh, I mean, well, look at him. You wouldn't call him ugly, would you? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> he's, um, he's quite handsome, really. Handsome? He's a spunk. No, I wouldn't say he's a spunk, Julia. Well, he's certainly better looking than you, and I'd start agreeing if I was you. <laughs> well, I hardly think that's fair. I mean, whether a person is good looking or not is irrelevant. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to have a little bit of a kip, so if you'll excuse me. Oh, Colin, mm. don't forget to go and see your mum, will you? Of course I won't. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> see you later. Have a good sleep. Yeah. Come on, Colin. Colin, were mm. you aware that your father has been inside? Yeah. yeah. Well, why didn't you tell us? Didn't seem to be very important. <laughs> Him being inside? Yeah, well, he's inside now, but he'll probably go outside later on. <laughs> you are a very peculiar person, Julia. <laughs> All right. You ask him if he's a murderer. Well, I don't think that's very polite. Ask him nicely. Julia, he's Colin's father. What about the suitcase? What about it? Well, there might be something in there that could tell us something about him. Ah, uh, no, no, that would be prying. Well, I don't know that it would be prying. Well, it would be prying. I well, think I know what prying is. Well, I don't know if I do know what necessarily well, prying... No. Oh, you see, now you kick the suitcase over. Ah. Well, I, look, Julia, I don't know that you can go through the man's personal well, belongings. Well, when you wake up murdered, don't you come crying to me. Oh. Can I help you? Um, I, I think that you owe us an explanation. All right, what do you want to know? Well, well, what's this for a start? That's a knife. Right. And what are you doing with a knife? I use it to scale fish. <laughs> Sorry? I use it to scrape the scales off fish. I'm a fisherman. Michael, say something. Ah. Oh. I've always thought the term fisherman is incredibly sexist. <laughs> then again, so is fisherwoman, and I suppose fisher person just sounds totally oh, loose. Shut up. <laughs> Mr. Carpenter, is it not true that you've just got out of jail? Yes, it is. Uh, well, I'm very sorry, but I'm very nervous around someone who's been in jail for 15 years. I was in jail for two days. Ah! <laughs> Colin hasn't seen me for 15 years, but I was in jail for two days. Have you got that? Um, why, why were you in jail, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I couldn't pay a fine. You see, I was uh, fishing in a place that I shouldn't have been. Oh, where? The fish hatchery. <laughs> not a murderer. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, <laughs> Michael, say something. <laughs> Technically speaking, you know, murder is the taking of life, so I suppose mm. fishing could be construed as a type of murder, and that's oh, if we were... Shut up, Michael. <laughs> Mr. Carpenter. <laughs> ah! 
we're, we're so sorry about this, and uh, it was very bad of Michael to have looked through your possessions. Oh, what an incredible thing to have done. Oh. No, that's quite all right. But uh, just one thing. Don't mention anything about this jail business to Colin, will you? Oh, no. Our lips are sealed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Hi, Ed. Hi, Colin. Well, I told Mum that you were in town. How does she react? She, she was... She was knocked, knocked out. <laughs> yeah, Colin, put this on for me, will you? OK. Yeah, Tom. <laughs> Put it on me. Oh. That's it. There you go. Good. Oh. What time did your mother say she's coming round for dinner? Uh, tea time. Oh. Did you have to twist her arm? No, nah, but I threw some water in her face. What? <laughs> After she painted. Oh. Listen, uh, do you think she'll approve of me, Colin? <laughs> Well, why, why, why are you so worried? Look, once I did a very stupid thing. Well, once I did too. <laughs> well, more, more than once, actually. Yeah, but what I did was uh, more stupid than anything that you could have ever done. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> What, what about the time I got my tongue stuck to the bruiser? <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. And that time that we went mushrooming and I had to go to the toilet really badly and so I relieved myself on the electric fence? <laughs> that was pretty stupid. Yes, it was, Colin. <laughs> it hurt, too. Yeah. No, what I did was even stupider. Wow. <laughs> what, what? The stupid thing I did was leaving him out than you two boys. And I've come back to uh, apologise. Fifteen years is a really long time, Dad. Well, why don't you, you ring us or write to us? I thought you'd be ashamed of me, boy. <laughs> How could I be ashamed of you after all those incredible things that you've done? You've been a famous author, a great actor, a Grand Prix racing car driver, a cordon bleu chef, a master spy. Did your mother tell you that? She, well, she, yeah, she, she confided in me. All those things. <laughs> dawn, dawn. <laughs> Is she still as I remember her? Oh, well, she's she's changed to Tinsy Wincy a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you my dad! Ta da! <laughs> yeah, how do I look, huh? You, you look like a hundred dollars, Dad. <laughs> you look great, Mr. Carpenter. Yeah, thanks. Now, do you think I should uh, splash some toilet water on my face? Uh, no, no. No. <laughs> oh. oh, I'll get that. Okay, we've organised everything, Mr. Carpenter. Good food, some nice wine, uh, a little bit of soft music. You should have a really romantic evening. Look, I don't know what I've done to deserve all this. Oh, um, well, it's the least we could do after accusing you of murder. <laughs> Len Carpenter, you wretch! You look lovely, Dawn. Oh, no, now, don't try and suck up to me, you oh. rat. This is Dad. You, you shouldn't call him a rat. No, you're quite right. He's worse than a rat. He's horrible little ferret. Uh, Michael, I think we should go. No, no, I disagree, Julia. I think we should try and talk about why Mrs. Carpenter sees Len as some kind of a rodent, and perhaps we can help her work through this emotional problem. Come on, Michael. Uh, right, um, the, the casserole's in the oven, and, and the dessert's in the fridge. Um, have a lovely evening. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't this great, eh? Mum, Dad, me. Well, you haven't uh, changed a bit, Dawn. Oh, bull dust, Len. <laughs> My hair's gone grey from all the worry, and now I'm getting old timer's disease. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I managed for 15 years bringing up two boys on my own and now Peter won't speak to me anymore and Colin's absolutely useless. 
What did, what did you get the casserole? Oh. oh, now look what you've made me say. <laughs> You're not useless. You've got heaps of talent. You've got looks. You've got... Uh... You've got friends, Colin. And that's important, eh? You know all about friends. What do you mean? Your friend, Mrs. Jamison. Dawn, I don't think we should talk about this in front of Colin. Oh, I was so ashamed when you nicked off with her. Everyone in Pittswood knew about it. Look, Dawn. And what was I supposed to tell Colin? Well, I told him I couldn't say he'd gone off with Mrs. Jamison, the PE teacher. I told him what any decent mother would. I told him... Well, frankly, I told him anything I could think of. Do, do you mean that you didn't do all them things Mum said, like you weren't a Grand Prix driver or a stealth bomber pilot? <sighs> no. No, I, I didn't really think so. <laughs> I get whatever work I can. In my time off, I go fishing. I've been doing a lot of fishing lately. Well, don't think you're going to catch anything round here, Len Carpenter. I'm not having you back. Dawn. We've all passed too much water under the bridge. <laughs> Dawn. You've wet your bed, now you can lie in it. <laughs> Dawn. Mrs. Jamison and me... We split up years ago. I was just too ashamed to come back. Well, I should think so, too. I don't know why I remained faithful to you, Len. I was faithful to you even after you left. I spent 15 years alone. But, except for that time when Uncle Enrico was staying. Yes. <laughs> and that other time with Uncle Brian. Yes, yes. And Uncle Stephen. Yes. And Uncle Rick. Yes. Con? I never knew I had so many uncles till you left there. All right, Con. Dawn, I've got something for you. You remember our honeymoon? We went to Albury and you lost your wedding ring in the river? Oh, yes. Well, I caught a rainbow trout there many years later and would you believe it that inside it I found that very wedding ring? No, I wouldn't. No, you're right, I didn't. <laughs> But in a second-hand shop, I found one very similar. There you are, Dawn. Oh, Con, look. Wow. That's almost as nice as the one Uncle Peter gave you. Oh, oh it's beautiful, Lynn. Thank you. And I was hoping, Dawn, that you might like a second honeymoon to go with it. But the first one was horrible. <laughs> well, we don't have to go to Albury again. <laughs> we go to somewhere special. Yeah, like Wodonga. <laughs> yeah, we could go to Wodonga. <laughs> well, a holiday would be nice. Of course it would. All right, Lynn, I will. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Hi. We weren't eavesdropping. No, definitely not. Uh... So you're going on a little holiday? Yep. Oh, uh, roughly how long do you think that would actually be for? Oh, you never know, Julia. I might be away for weeks. Really? <laughs> or months. Oh. Who knows? How fantastic. <laughs> congratulations. Thank yeah. you. No, not you. I mean, <laughs> congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Carpenter. Thank you, Michael. I'll miss you. <laughs> Will there be anyone else you'll miss, Mum? Yes, of course. I'll miss you too, Julia. <laughs> Any, anyone, anyone else? I'll miss you, Con. Give me a squeeze. <laughs> and I'll miss you too, son. Well, it's no good, Joy. It doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> Slides? Yep. Good. Well, hang on, we need something to project them onto. Oh, you could take a sheet off my bed. Oh, Colin, something white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'll go and get one for Margaret. Gee, it was good of Julia to borrow this projector from school, wasn't it, Colin? It's going to be a lot easier to look at the slides now. Yeah, I didn't think you had to have a projector. Oh, that's OK. I thought they looked good on the fridge. <laughs> Colin, did you really believe all that stuff your mum said about your dad? Well, I, I must admit I had my doubts when Mum told me that he was the first astronaut to land on Venus. <laughs> because in the uh, book on the galaxy that I got, it said that no one had even landed on the moon yet. Yeah, well, that's an old book, Colin. You mean someone has landed on the moon? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why didn't anyone tell me? Here we are. Haven't you ever heard of Neil Armstrong, Colin? The swimmer. No, that's Duncan Armstrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Neil Armstrong landed on the moon in June 1969 in Sea of Tranquility. That's right, he's a, he's a the swimmer. <laughs> Never mind, Michael. Colin's a little lost cause. Turn the lights off. All right. Michael. Mm -hmm. It was July 1969. <laughs>